Um, and in my current life, my father died when I was very young. Um, you also said that I probably would I probably traveled abroad or, or lived abroad or what have you. And again, in, in this current life, I lived abroad from the age of seven um, up until my mid-twenties. Um, I lived in America and I also lived in Portugal. Um, boy, you said so many other details. Um, you said also um, what happens with people that have this, is it the, the Sag, Sagittarius on the 12th house? On the twelfth house, is it sort it's of? It's the degree of Sag, and it's where the ruler is in your first. Okay. Uh, Jupiter rules Sag, and it's there in your first, which said in that last lifetime you pr- felt pretty much alone and isolated. Yeah, and um, I mean, one of the things I always say to people is I'm a loner, <laughs> and I'm quite yeah. proud to say I'm a loner as yeah. well. I don't have a, a, I don't have a problem with that. Um, and the other thing um, you said as well was that uh, I would use a different name. Um, a student and you felt more, com- more, more, you felt safer. Yes. So for this life, then bringing in information, and then that's exactly what I do. I mean, Valentine Saint Alban is my artistic name. Um, it's actually my father's first and second two names, um, and I do feel safer using a, a pseudonym to put myself out there for whatever reason. I don't know. <laughs> but, do you write? Do you write Valentine? Because you were a journalist. I'm sure a journalist or a. Um a writer of some kind where you were spreading your views and your philosophies and, and now you might find a circuitous way to get them out there but you feel very strongly it's still in you and let's put it this way your contract now is to is to get that um, get that information out there and with that son in the fifth house I have news for you I know you have this wonderful show and it's for adults but there's also um, your Im- biggest impact in this lifetime is going to be on the children that aren't being recognized as you were not in your last lifetime and again, you've just, I mean, you, I, I do write. I, I, I am a novelist, and um, I write, <laughs> and it's interesting, I write for young adults. I, I, well, I write for adults, but I write for young adults, and my main Good. character is, she's a, she's a child. Yeah, and it's Good. actually, you know, it's not just one book. I mean, I, I have the first book out currently at the moment, I'm working on the second book. But um, it's, like, it's like a whole series, you know. Uh, is this series, is it, is it something that will be empowering in a metaphysical way or yes. a spiritual way? To, okay, that's yes. exactly what yeah. you should be doing. Well, and I'm doing it, so that's good to hear. Good. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, so. absolutely. You're living up to your contract. And here's what I tell people, mm-hmm. you know, when I do my sessions, by the way, if anybody's interested in mm-hmm. reading any of my articles or looking at any of these things up, because there's a lot of information they can go to www.marguerite.manning.com but as I, as I say all the time when you're living up to this contract with the universe that doesn't mean that you're going to hear angels singing and bells ringing yes. what it means is that things get a little easier and you start to feel joy Joy. we confuse joy with happiness happiness we all expect to be happy but every day we're happy and every day we're resentful and every day we're sorry and every day we're depressed happiness is an emotion that ebbs and flows but joy isn't Joy is when you're when you're experiencing joy. Even on those days when you want to throw everybody out the window, the joy that you have experienced from your creative contribution to this universe can't be you can't diminish it. And that's what where your joy lies. And your joy lies in bringing to children what you did not have in your last lifetime when you were separated from your family and you were sent away, and you felt like you were on your own when your father died. And you, that's why you feel very capable because you were forced to take care of yourself. It's kind of like an Oliver Twist kind of thing where yes. you were pretty mm-hmm. much scrapping around taking care of yourself, and now you feel very comfortable in it and kind of, you might even brook, uh, you brook no interference from, from people who try to dominate you in that respect now because you're so comfortable. But the last lifetime, it was, a little, it was very difficult, and it was a yeah. feeling of isolation that no child should feel. And you felt, yeah. and you were feeling that way. And I say, child, I think you were a young adult mm-hmm. because your belief and your, 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 your beliefs were different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's amazing how all of this works. I mean, um, and again, in this lifetime, I, you know, I had to grow up very fast as a child. I did. I was very lucky. I've been very lucky in this lifetime. I have a great mother who's been a, a very good support for me. And she would do everything that she could in her in her power to, to help me. Um, but again, you know, I did grow up uh, in a single parent household. It was difficult. But I, I don't feel like I lacked in terms of confidence because of that. So I guess maybe I've taken the past and I've moved on into the, the present now, into this lifetime, a bit stronger and um, doing what I need to do. So, I mean, 
this is all like really uh i love i love these types of discussions you were empowered by that if i were to look at your chart i would mm -hmm. say what you're the boogeyman in your soul's cause is the thing that you have suppressed is the fact of putting yourself out there when you speak about what you really feel Mm -hmm. And what your your principles, your politics, your belief system, that's there's still part of you where the soul is going, ah, I don't know about that. Yeah. Because of all, everything that your world fell down on you when that happened. So if I'm here to say to you, you know what, Valentine, that was yesterday, yesterday's gone. I can under, I validate this all. It did happen yesterday, but it's not going to in this life. Yes. And it's true. I mean, um, I'm, I, you know, I'm not afraid to speak my mind in terms of everybody knows who knows me. I'm not afraid to speak my mind, you know, one on one or right. when I used to be in the office, I used to have a lot of problems with that. I used to speak my mind and people don't like that. But it's taken me many, many years to get to the point where I am now where I'm trying to get out on a more public um, in a more and public way. And, and it took me. Will. Yeah, it took me. It was quite a journey to get to where I am now. So. Um, it's, it's just very amazing stuff. And I, ha I have one question. Sure. Why do I have Saturn sitting on my sun? <laughs> well, the, with that Saturn there sitting on the sun, it's telling me that you're, you know, this is exactly what, I, what I'm talking about in this lifetime. You were without a father, as you said, growing up in this lifetime. And there's a reason for that. Saturn is our lesson. Saturn is our karmic lesson. And you were, you're pretty much, look at that sun and all those, and this is the house of children. This is, it's packed. And you're here, this is why I believe that you're here to teach children who don't have that kind of an, a, a guiding hand and an authority figure in this life to look into, inward for the authority, to look inward and not, be, and not be feeling as if they've lost something or they missed something, to empower them and to be their own authority the way you were. And I know yeah. at times that can feel very overbearing and overwhelming, like you've got the weight of the world on your shoulders, but mm -hmm. by the same token... When you see it in the fifth house of, of uh, creativity, in the fifth house of creative self-expression, childlike, having that authoritative figure there right on top of your son, it's saying you learned how to be your own authority and what, what you created and what you brought into the world. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's a really very, it's a very, very, it shows that you're supposed to be an authority figure when it comes to children, yourself in this lifetime, if you do the heavy lifting of that house. Very interesting. So, um, I'm aware of the time, and I know you need to get off, so I just have one last question for you, Marguerite. Um, I know a lot of people, when they talk about karmic astrology, they look at the squares and they look at retrograde planets. Do you use those as well when you're looking at oh, a absolutely. chart? absolutely. Retrograde, yeah. Retrogrades are markers for me. They're telling, mm -hmm. me, they're t telling me things that have to actually be pronounced in the chart. But the, the, the whole backstory and the whole relationship is all in the aspects and the degree yes. that they're in. That tells me all of what I call the cosmic buzz. And when I run the chart first, and then I bring up the asteroids, and that fills in the details for me. So it's really, a, it's really like a, a soap opera in many ways, but aren't all of our lives, you know? And many of the patterns come back so that we, because this is the way the universe and we agreed prior to coming into this incarnation, we would address these issues. So they're not as severe, maybe, as they were in the last time, but they're patterns, nonetheless, so that we are forced to be reminded, oh, they're kind of like a cosmic playpen or keeping us within a certain realm of situations and people that were forced to address the things that we said, that we chose, that we wanted to address in this lifetime. Nobody's punishing us. Prior to coming in, we sat down with the cosmos, and the cosmos said, okay, Valentine, where do, where do you want to, um, where do you, what do you want to learn? He said, okay, you know, give me creative self-expression 101. And boom. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. why cr creatively, you know, you might even find it difficult to have your own children or put any of your creations out there because you're here to be your own authority. You're here to do that on your own. You said you were going to. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what people never seem to realize as well with astrology, you know, um, when we're talking about with the karmic side of things, the time of birth, it's very important. And you've just touched on that. It's not necessarily um, everything has to be in play for us to right. come into an incarnation Absolutely. all the right ingredients have to be there and that means all the right ingredients for the people that we have to meet as well so, Absolutely, and yeah. you know, that's why it's such an incredible weaving of you know, crossing over each other, and we think it's incredible, it's nothing to the universe I mean, you know um, it's, it's when that cosmic clock moves into the energies that we've chosen for this lifetime, we have no choice, we're dispatched to this earth, and there are energies, we've chosen them so I always say that our birth States are, you know, are really a spiritual agenda disguised as a physical event. We, it's not, it's no coincidence we were born on the day we were born. That's when the cosmic formula for us was activated. 
Yes, and I think that's something that hopefully as time now moves forward, we're coming into a new period of, of awareness, that people will realise us being here, it's not an accident. We are here right. because we're meant to be here. Um, Absolutely. You know, and we've chosen to be here. Absolutely. So I'd like to thank you so much for joining us this evening, Marguerite. Um, would you just like to say your website one more time? Sure. It's www.marguerite.manning.com. And if they'd like to join me on Facebook on my Cosmic Karma page, it's a fun place to be. I'd love, I'd love seeing you there. Okay. And um, your radio show. Uh, I haven't heard some, I haven't heard new. No, I've been away because yeah. I'm working on my next book, and I had a, n- a new article being published in Del Horoscope on uh, in next month, right on the subject we were talking about, Juno. Okay. Our karmic match made in heaven, and that's I've been doing some working on some writing. So therapy for the soul, which is my show on Blog Talk. I'm taking a little bit of a hiatus for the summer, yeah. and coming back in the fall. Which um, people can listen to the archives. They're there. So um, yes, yeah, they're they're yeah. there. They just Google the therapy for the soul, and they can pick up on it. So there you have it. So I want to thank you so much for joining us this evening. And your book is fabulous. I really enjoyed it. And thank you for being with us this evening. And good luck with your book signing. I hope lots of people are there. Thanks. (laughs) uh, Thanks so much, Valentine. Please have me back again. I'd love to. I'd love to. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Bye bye now. Right. So that was Marguerite Manning. Well, we've been very, very um, fortunate to have her this evening. She's a very busy woman. And as you can hear, she. She's absolutely phenomenal as well with the information that she can give you and her just her basic um, understanding of how astrology works. So that's the show for this evening. Um, Mercury retrograde. So, uh, you know, expect, as I said earlier, um, as I started the show, expect lots of delays, lots of confusion. Um, but it's a very... Uh, it's an interesting time, Mercury Retrograde, and we've had a great show this evening uh, talking about karmic astrology, which fits right in with a Mercury Retrograde phase, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I just wanted to, again, just uh, just to remind people, have a look at my website. Um, I've got this new event coming up. Please do check it out. If you like um, the, the topics that I talk about on the show, then um, and if you live in... in England, if you live close to the Peterborough area, then uh, you really should uh, come in and 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 have a and be part of it for the, for the day. It's going to be great. So um, that's it. I'll be back uh, not next week, but the uh, week um, after next with my other guest. So until then, keep your eyes on the stars. <laughs> Peterborough FM, the station that listens to you.